ensuring food security in the Coral Triangle through the ecosystem approach to fisheries management. It is known as the global epicenter of marine biodiversity, 6 million square kilometers of the most biologically important marine areas on the planet. The Coral Triangle cuts a rich swath along the Earth's equator through Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste, and is where 76% of the world's corals, many charismatic marine species, and the Earth's largest mangrove forests and tuna fisheries can be found. It is also home to 363 million people, most of whom live directly off the bounty of its fishery resources, a precious powerhouse with an annual value of 2.3 billion U.S. dollars. Precisely because of the region's significance, in 2009, the leaders of the six Coral Triangle countries came together to launch the Coral Triangle Initiative, or CTI, on coral reefs, fisheries, and food security. They also formulated a Regional Plan of Action, or RPOA, to concretely address the biggest threats to the Coral Triangle within the next 10 years, and outlined five key goals. Recognizing that fisheries are a vital food source of the people of the Coral Triangle, the plan's goal number two is the full application of the Ecosystem Approach to Fisheries Management, or EAFM, which is meant to address critical problems such as overfishing, illegal fishing, overcapacity, and bycatch. The provinces and the villages and the communities people, they live closer to the, to the coast. Their livelihood depends entirely on, on fishing. Among the countries covered by the Coral Triangle, the Pacific Islands, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste, along with the neighboring nations of Fiji and Vanuatu, are facing a unique challenge. Because of smaller populations, as well as traditional fishing systems and practices shared by families and communities, the fishing grounds of the Pacific have long remained rich, unspoiled, and largely unexploited for generations. But all that is beginning to change. Growing populations, unregulated land development, and resource extraction leading to habitat destruction, climate change, and the ever-expanding reach of unsustainable commercial fishing are threatening the state of fisheries in the Pacific. There is an urgent need for sustainable solutions and to find a balance in meeting both conservation and human needs. Our exploitation of the marine resources is the major cause of the reduction of the fish stock. This is simply because of the pressure uh, from the fishing industries and also within the communities because of the use of the distracting fishing methods that they continue to use now. One of the major causes of destruction of coastal habitat and as well as the reduction of fisheries in Solomon Island is logging. Uh, although it happens upland, the pollution that has been caused by the logging goes down to the, from the river down to the reef. For the people of the Pacific, there is one sure way learning and applying the principles of EAFM. What is EAFM? Ecosystems Approach to Fisheries Management is an approach that is adopted by the Fisheries and Agricultural Organization to roll out the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries. Under this code, we are now looking at um, fisheries not just as a commodity from the, both the social as well as the economic perspective. You look at the, the commodity in relation to its uh, habitat. You look at it from an integrated approach. Although the benefits of EAFM are clear, Lack of skills and knowledge is an obstacle to meeting this fundamental goal of the Regional Plan of Action, or RPOA, thus underscoring the need for capacity building among fishing communities in the Pacific. In support of this effort, the Asian Development Bank, or ADB, has carried out regional technical assistance with the goal of strengthening coastal and marine resources management in the Coral Triangle of the Pacific. It covers Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste, while engaging the adjacent countries of Fiji and Vanuatu. One activity under this assistance is learning EAFM from experiences in the Southeast Asian Coral Triangle. 
KDB is investing in the Coral Triangle because it is a great way to help people improve their livelihoods and achieve food security while still protecting the marine environment. The Pacific Coral Triangle stretches from Timor-Leste to Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, all the way through to Fiji. Everywhere in these countries, demand for coastal resources exceeds natural sustainable productivity. The Asian Development Bank is a strong advocate of sustainability and therefore we would like to see that these resources are utilized responsibly for the future. Overfishing has occurred through large commercial fishing and has reduced the stocks and also resulted to loss of jobs. The bank would like to see these resources as a means of food security. EAFM training was conducted on the island of Bohol in the Philippines from April 28 to May 2, 2014. 35 government and NGO workers and community leaders from the Pacific Core Triangle plus Fiji and Vanuatu joined six experts from Southeast Asian Coral Triangle countries and local communities who shared their experiences with their counterparts from the Pacific. Bohol proved an ideal learning site because of its fruitful 48-year history of practicing EAFM. It is considered the birthplace of EAFM and the most advanced EAFM site in the Coral Triangle. Clearly, there is much that can be learned here. EAFM is carried out through the effective implementation of growth, control, and maintenance mechanisms attained through scientific research and the participation of stakeholders on all levels. Each mechanism has specific tools to achieve concrete goals. For growth, optimal fisheries production and greater ecosystem integrity are pursued through the establishment of fish sanctuaries. Fishing zones are delineated and managed and opportunities sought for environment-friendly income generation. In the Pacific countries, grounds covered by traditional tabu or fishing bands and locally managed areas serve as fish sanctuaries. A tabu fishing area is a practice that many of our ancestors have been doing many years ago. In the Solomon Islands, it is still in practice. It is basically seasonal closure. It may be site-specific or species-specific, where usually the head of chief in a community is the one who has authority to advise the community when to close an area. For control, access to fisheries and resources is regulated by using only prescribed fishing gear. Limits are set for catch size, and fishing seasons within a year are clearly defined. The licensing and registration of fishermen and boats are also encouraged, with fishing laws and regulations actively enforced. In the Pacific, catch size is limited by the use of traditional fishing gear, such as spears and traps. Okay, in front of our traditional boats are canoes. Our traditional gears are bow and arrows, spears, and we've got other methods to catch fish, such as traditional fans built along the shore. In terms of canoe, it limits you to go further out into the sea, as well as it limits you in, on your catch. For maintenance, institutional capacity for EAFM is further developed through the coordination of units of governance. In the Pacific, clans and communities own most of the coastlines, and it is these traditional owners, rather than government units, who dictate how such places are managed. How then is an EAFM system put in place? After introducing the concept of EAFM to the community and building consensus to support it, the following steps must be taken. Number one, define the Fisheries Management Unit, or FMU. The areas to be managed, as well as their ecological, social, economic, and governance components are identified. A vision for the FMU must be shared and agreed upon by all stakeholders. The first thing is draw the line where the fish migrate, where they propagate or aggregate. And when lines are defined, it is easy to zone it later on. Two, defining what are the resources. And number three, what are the activities in that area that is common. Number two, identify and prioritize issues and goals. 
Using scientific data, stakeholders collectively assess threats and problems associated with the FMU. The goals of a proposed EAFM are defined, and both obstacles to and opportunities for achieving these goals considered. We may have difficulties in terms of funding. We try to search for sources. We connect to partners to provide us. We may have difficulties in terms of personnel. There are times that politics always comes into play. Number three, develop the EAFM plan. This involves setting objectives. The stakeholders decide how to measure their success in achieving these objectives, what actions to take, and what financial resources are needed. Number four, implement the EAFM plan. The plan will be communicated to all stakeholders and its implementation will require good governance involving widespread participation. Areas of potential conflict may exist and ways to address such conflicts must be formulated. Daghan legal officers dili gusto nga ipatuman nga mga ordinansa tungod kay sila mawad-an na kuno og panginabuhi pero tungod lagi kay ordinansa kinanglan matuman gid na sa atong chief executive do nay political will nga kinanglan nga iya gyud nga ipatuman ang unsa man ang balaod Number 5 monitor evaluate and adapt the plant's performance is tracked to know if desired outcomes are realized. Based on such a review, stakeholders can determine whether or not the plan is working. Managers and fishermen can learn from any failures or successes and allow the plan to adapt and evolve according to a community's needs. We write the measures of success. Number two, giving something like a self-evaluation tool for those actually implementing it. Number three, is getting the people to analyze themselves what worked, what did not work, based again on specific indicators. And the number three, putting specific numerical values. Learning from the experts, fisheries managers, and local communities, the training participants set the roadmap to enhance EAFM in their home countries and communities. Planned activities include establishing an EAFM legal framework establishing sustainable financing mechanisms, adapting traditional management systems for EAFM objectives, and beefing up capacity for research, marine zoning, and enforcement. Achieving an ecosystems approach will be at various levels. Some may achieve it more as a complete endeavor. Some may even just be approaching it at a certain level. So we consider this as a continuing work because it's more of a journey rather than the destination. They also emerged with a greater understanding of their world and their part in it, for it is only in embracing such inextricable connections between people and the sea, as well as among the human communities in the Coral Triangle, that life on Earth is secured for today and for the future.